first, let's bring in Charlie Hurt. He is Washington Times opinion editor and Fox News contributor and Miranda Devine, New York Post columnist extraordinaire, Fox News contributor and author of what I think is the most revealing and important political book published in the past two years and in a just world would have earned her a Pulitzer Prize, Laptop from Hell. Good to see you both. Thank you for being here. Uh, Charlie, I want to go to you first because uh, talking a little bit about the jobs and then we're going to get into the scandal with Miranda. But we heard a tired old refrain <laughs> from the president on jobs that he claims to have created. Roll tape. All told, we've added 13.5 million jobs since I took office, around 800,000 of them manufacturing jobs. We created more jobs in two years than any president ever created in a four-year, single four-year term. We did it in two years. Now, we know that ni at least 9.4 million of those jobs that he claims to have created came back from the COVID lockdowns. So he really only has bragging rights for about right. 3 million right. new jobs, doesn't well, he? Well, see, this is one of the advantages of senility, is you can just sort of make <laughs> stuff up, and it doesn't matter anymore. And uh, But it is interesting the degree to which every time he makes up these numbers, they're obviously always to his advantage. Yeah. And, um, and, and, the, and unfortunately, you know, we ha we're at a position right now where we have a press that doesn't, you know, with the exception of a few of us, uh, that don't hold them to account. There was a time in this country where yeah. if a president came out and completely lied like that, everybody would fact check. You didn't have it. What you know, you didn't have this splintered ideological thing where you have the New York, the uh, Washington Post and the New York Times just pretending that he's not. But of course, up. his his lies are not consistent. A, a couple of seconds later, literally seconds <laughs> later, he said, "We recovered all the jobs lost during the pandemic." We've added a million more new jobs. He doesn't realize that that <laughs> statement contradicts the first statement he made about jobs. Yeah, and, and there's a reason I never worked for uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, because I have a headache just hearing these numbers. Right. But it is, it, it's <laughs> remarkable, even going back to before the 2022 elections, they had to revise all these numbers downward after the election, after they had run the election on, oh, we're, we're doing everything great, the economy is great, and, uh, but this is, this is sort of the new politics. Miranda Devine, another tired old refrain from the president that we have not heard recently, by the way, is that he never talked to his son about business. And we haven't heard it. And in fact, the narrative has changed a little uh, based on all of the stuff that you have been digging out, that, that various congressional committees have been digging out. We got these 5,000 messages that uh, were produced under a pseudonym that by themselves are probably illegal, according to the Federal Records Act. Um, what more are you looking for specifically that might tie Joe Biden as vice president in with his son's business dealings? Well, there's already so much, and you're quite right that um, the White House has changed its tune quite significantly. I mean, it might only be one or two words in the sentence that Joe Biden knew nothing about his son's uh, overseas business. But in fact, now they've changed it to Joe Biden was not in business with his son. <laughs> so, um, you know, begging the question, yeah. the, the emails, the pseudonyms, the aliases that Joe Biden was using when he was communicating with his son when he he was vice president about, um, you know, sensitive topics like uh, upcoming phone calls or uh, with the Ukrainian president Poroshenko or upcoming uh, trips to Ukraine. Um, that sort of material, um, you just ask, why is Joe Biden using an alias if he has nothing to hide? Mm. And um, it just seems like the entire uh, apparatus of government right now is grinding away in an effort to h protect Joe Biden, cover for Joe Biden and for all the trickery that went on when he was vice president uh, in aid of his family's influence peddling scheme. And so, you know, it's very difficult for the um, House Republicans, James Comer and so on in those committees, um, but they have made progress and they have been able to dig up documents and material and they're continuing uh, to try to do that. But, um, you know, I I'm not really sure uh, if we're ever going to get any smoking gun because I don't think that's how 
this kind of operation works. You know, you're never going to get a check with Joe Biden's name on it signed by some Ukrainian oligarch right, for $5 right. million. Dollars. Um, it's much cleverer than that. Well, and, and Charlie, he feels pretty confident that it'll never happen, that he'll never, there'll never be any kind of uh, direct uh, canceled check, you know, right. with his name on the back of it or something like that. He laughed it off yesterday, by the way. Roll tape of that. Uh, you give your bank records to Congress. Do you, do you want me? Do you want me? <laughs> Let's talk about why I'm here. Yeah, right. And then, of course, a couple of months ago, he actually kind of teased us by suggesting what Miranda was talking yeah. about, that you're never going to find the money. Roll that tape. Where's the money? I'm joking. Mr. President, Mr. President, it's a bunch of malarkey. He feels pretty secure that they're not going to find any quid pro quo. Uh, does his staff feel that secure? Does the DNC feel that secure? Oh, I, I, would, I would think not. I, I would think they, were, they have to be worried about some of this stuff. But I would actually argue that uh, so much of what Miranda has already dug up, uh, it, they are the canceled checks. Uh, it's pretty obvious. You, I mean, you have to really work hard right. to try to uh, ignore the evidence that is piled up. Um, and uh, and I, but I also think that it's important from a political standpoint to remember that uh, you know obviously the stuff that Miranda has has done, and nobody has done a better job than she has uh, in uncovering this stuff. But also, uh, we've been able to make a lot of it official because uh, Republicans have control of the House today. Mm -hmm. And whether it's the IRS whistleblowers, it, whether it's the investigative interviews, the 1023s uh, the, with the FBI, uh, or whether it's this, this 5,000 emails uh, that were uh, clearly designed by Joe Biden to conceal his involvement in what is clearly, or, or what appears probably to be, uh, business operations with his son. By the way, if he wrote any of those emails or texts on a government computer, he How broke he broke the law. The Federal Records Act does not allow you to do use false names on on a government issued communique. So so he broke the law. If if. Uh, How how is that not, not 10 times worse than, than misplacing documents? Well, let, let me give that to Miranda, because, Miranda, the, the fact is, is that right now a lot of Democrats are trying to make a, a, a comparison between Trump's family and Hunter's family and saying, look, every president or vice president has family members that might get involved. But if you're looking for equivalencies, I mean, isn't the evidence that you were amassing and that the various congressional committees are amassing uh, about the connection between Joe, Joe Biden as vice president, whether or not he, he was bribed to do what he did on the basis of how much money Hunter took and keeping those pesky prosecutors away from Hunter's business. Isn't that evidence more substantive than any evidence used against Trump in the first impeachment? Oh, I mean, there's no comparison. Basically, Donald Trump was impeached for Joe Biden's sins. Uh, mm. Incredible that mm. uh, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats got away with that, uh, particularly now when we're revisiting um, some of the information there. People like Viktor Shokin, the prosecutor general in Ukraine, who was fired um, on Joe Biden's behest uh, just as he was closing in on that corrupt energy company, Burisma, that was paying Hunter Biden a million dollars a year. Right. Um, and, you know, now we see these emails on the laptop showing that there was pressure coming from Burisma onto Hunter Biden to, to demanding deliverables and high level uh, people from the United States putting pressure on Poroshenko about the prosecutor general. Uh, we now know the prosecutor general a month before he was fired, um, uh, sent his investigators to go and seize all the uh, property belonging to the owner of that corrupt energy company, Burisma. Um, it, it was obvious that his investigation was aggressive and ongoing. And um, the proof of the pudding is that after he was fired, um, his successor, who was uh, chosen at the behest of Joe Biden, who Joe Biden approved of and said yeah. was very good, um, he closed the Burisma investigation. So Burisma got away with a as small if fine. As if by order, yeah. you know, as if by <laughs> order. I mean, it, it is. A, and of course, then we have the reporting of John Solomon and others showing that that he actually overrode a task force of of the Department of Justice, yeah. the Treasury Department, and I believe the State Department as well, who said that Shokin was really doing some good going after the bad guy. 
guys. So he came in and overrode that, and it just happened to benefit his son. All right, final question. Very quickly, it's got to be Charlie, because they're giving me the rap here. Uh, Politico had a piece on Democrats, how concerned Democrats are about certain key states, including Pennsylvania, yeah. suggesting that they could really lose Pennsylvania. I mean, that is a key state. Could Democrats lose it in 2024? Oh, I think without a doubt. I mean, we learned that in 2016. And, um, and, and I think it's also why they, you see a lot of lying about economic numbers. Uh, if, if things, uh, you know, economically don't improve, mm -hmm. I think that Democrats could be looking at a much shrunken map All for right. that. What a great panel. Miranda and Charlie, great to see you both. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. And don't forget, Fox Business is going to be hosting the second Republican primary debate at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library in Simi Valley, California. That's on Friday, September 27th.